What's up guys? It's Jen. It's been five minutes. I'm back. I'm ready to go. I've got this new thing here that Jason bought me. It's a dry erase board and it's my new best friend. That, I mean, a couple weeks ago it was Lion Bear was my new best friend, director Lion Bear. This week, this dry erase board. This is where I'm going to put all my, my deepest thoughts and feelings. For instance, I'm, I'm having a deep thought right now. A very deep thought. Do you want to know what it is, Jason? I do want to know what your deep thought is. It's very deep. It's good. Oops. <laughs> it's good. And it's really intense because you're going to... The excitement is building. I know. It's, it's intense and uh, you're going to learn a lot about me. Okay. All right. So this, I'm, I'm very, I'm, I'm very vulnerable right now. This is my deep thought <laughs> for the day. This is maybe, maybe I'll even put a little smiley face. Just a little bit of smiley face. He, he, he. <laughs> <laughs> that. That's where we're at right now. That's my deep thought for the day. That is a very deep thought. It's deep in your stomach. It's I see. deep in my stomach. And my whole system. What do we got today? Who do we got in the chat room so far? Uh, we have a lot of people. Mm. Uh, I so far count eight people and four guests. So eight have, people and four guests. We have four, we have four lurkers. Ooh. They're just, they're just lurking. Creepers. They're just checking out. Creepers. So, it's probably my mom. Um, MacGyver says, sorry, gen legendary. I live too far away to get you any wings. Well, you're not working hard enough then, MacGyver. You're not working hard enough. Are we uh, ready to start with some questions, Jen? I think so. I've just had my water. I'm feeling good. Let's go. All right, first question is from Brian Lamb. He asks, can you please show some techniques on muting open strings to keep them from ringing out? P.S. Love your hair. <laughs> you know I love those P.S.'s. I love those P.S.'s. All right, that's a great question. The question is, can you show some techniques on how to mute uh, open strings, keep them from ringing out? Which is great, and it's, it's the opposite of what we normally try to do because we normally want everything to ring out, so it's a little bit foreign. Like if I'm gonna play an A minor chord, I don't want this sixth string ringing out. It's not that bad if it does, because it's actually in the chord, but we want five down for this. So what I do is I have my thumb come over the neck slightly, and it's muting it. That's one way to do it. Let's just say we're doing a little F and we want this first string muted. I've got my first finger on the second string, first fret, and I just barely roll it over so it's touching, not pinching, so we're getting that sound, but just touching so it's muting. So I get this. So a couple techniques, or what's, what's another one? where I roll over sometimes, oh yeah, yeah. C sharp, no, it's not C sharp, silly. C minor, I have my first finger come over and touch the sixth string. So I can, I feel comfortable doing a full strum, but this sixth string is definitely muted. So those are the three ways that I can think of off the top of my head of have your thumb roll over if you need to, have another finger roll down on a string, or have a finger come up and touch the string above it. That's what I think. Thank you for the question, and uh, thank you for the comment on my hair, because I don't know about it right now. I just don't know. I'm not feeling great about my hair. Why not? I don't know. It's just... I need some, I'm bored, I'm bored. I get bored easily with my hair, my life, my hair life. We have uh, a listener question that I really want to ask. Uh, little T129, he's a soldier in Afghanistan and he thought that this would be a good time to learn guitar. Okay. Um, his question is, I found that I transpose my first and second finger when playing a D chord. Will I encounter a problem somewhere down the road with this fingering? Oh, so my guess is that you're doing this. And thank you, sir, for being in Afghanistan. Major props, major shout outs. We had another girl, Heather, who was also serving in Afghanistan. And for one, thank you so much for your service. I can't even, I don't even know how to explain uh, my gratitude. And I know lots of people here feel the same way. But anyways, 
Bye. And thanks for watching us <laughs> in Afghanistan. This, um, you know, it's kind of nice because if you're doing this, you can go back to this D minor. It's just a weird shape for me because when you, how am I going to do this? How do I do this? You know, if this is absolutely how you've learned it, I'm not going to stop you. It's just more familiar this way, but I don't think it's, I don't think it's bad. Again, like we had one teacher, uh, Brandon, who played his E chords like this instead of like this. So switching the third and second finger around. And if that's how you learn it, then that's how you learn it. It's, it's more common, but there's nothing that I can think of offhand where it's really going to cause you some problems. So I say go for it. I mean, my, my preference, because only because I've been doing it for 16 years, is to do it this way. But that doesn't make it right. That's just the standard fingering. Just like we can do, we can do fingerings tons of different ways. You know, E minor like this, like this, like uh, I already did that, E minor like this, bar it. You know, I'm always saying you have alternatives. So if that's how you got it, then that's how you got it. Um, but you know what I would do? I would try it both ways. I would try it both ways and then see which one's comfortable because don't just stay on something because you feel comfortable with it. Stay on it because it makes more sense because that's we get in the habit of saying, no, no, this is easier. Well, it's easier because you do it all the time. But if you know both ways, then you can say, man, when I go from D to D minor, this totally makes sense. But maybe when I go from uh, D to G, I don't know, this makes more sense. So know how to do it both ways and then pick and choose uh, which one in any given situation is going to work best for you. But that's a great question. Please stay safe, sir. Please, please, please stay safe. Yeah, I want to give him some ma major shout outs for that guy. From, uh, from one, from, uh, especially July 4th coming around. Yeah. Yep. He said the video was cutting in and out pretty bad for him. I'm not surprised. The internet service in those places are horrible. Yeah. I'd... Um, and he may have to wait till this gets posted to YouTube to get his answer. And uh, don't worry, we'll totally get it. Jason, Jason, we got Jason and Mark here today. Jason's in in the studio with me. Mark's outside watching the feed. Uh, we will get this posted probably in the next couple days, right? Oh yeah, it most. Uh, more than likely it'll be today or tomorrow. Today or tomorrow. What's his name? Do we know his name? Uh, his real little name? Little T129. You ask him his real name? I would like to know his real name. I gotta, I gotta thank people like that by name. Oh, I gotta... he says he works for a living, so he must be a, a non-commissioned. He's gotta be a he's gotta be a sergeant or something like that, like I was. Oh. Because he I called him, I accidentally called him sir. He says I work for a living. And anytime you call a non-commissioned uh, officer that. Like, that's the first thing you say. Usually, don't call me sir, I work for a living. Because the, the officers sit in the office and do nothing. I have no idea what conversation is going on between them. That Jason and it's, T are having a moment like this. They're fusing together. It's, 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 I, it's, it's not, I'm it's not. military a, services, yeah. Do I look like I could be in the military? No. Don't answer that. <laughs> don't answer that. <laughs> Somebody did call me G.I. Jane the other day. Tommy. Tommy, 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 thank you. Can I call him, sir? Or is that rude? Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> That's rude. I wouldn't call him. He, he works for a living. I don't know what that he's, means. He's enlisted. He's not an officer. He's enlisted. Oh, I, I, whatever. Thank you. Tommy, thank you. Great question. It's going to be up uh, t in the next couple days. He's so, an E6. He's, I don't he's know. A, he's a staff sergeant. He's a staff sergeant. Say, say staff sergeant Tommy. Thank you for your question. Staff Sergeant Tommy, thank you for your question. Can I salute or no? Is that inappropriate? Yeah, no, they don't salute. No. <laughs> I'll play a chord. <laughs> that's my salute to Tommy. All right, that's pretty cool. I think that's pretty cool. Like uh, somebody from Afghanistan in in the service is like watching you answer questions. Well, that um, that's who won the guitar contest, Heather who was serving, she couldn't do, she couldn't make a video because she had nothing to record with because mm -hmm. she's in Afghanistan and she makes this incredible animation and sends it and she should be home soon. We are all waiting. So post on my Facebook some good positive messages for Heather because she's, she, she should be coming home soon and she's going to have a guitar waiting for her with my big fat signature on it because I had to ruin the guitar. <laughs> you ready for another question? Word. All right, Daniela. Hagar, Hagar, after ruining that, I'm asked, I can't finger pick after playing the guitar for 11 years. 
Are there any good exercises to strengthen the fingers for playing guitar? P.S. Loving the hair. I got two loving the hairs in a row. That makes my day. That makes me not want to have chicken wings because I, I've been fed the, the food of love. <laughs> which is comments about my hair. Um, so the question is, I can't finger pick. Are there any good exercises? And there's not really any specific exercises that you can do other than finger picking. What's nice is you finger pick with a metronome. Let me find, I don't even know where Mr. Metronome is. I may, I may have th thrown him across the room, which is what I do with some of my gear. No, my metronome doesn't work. Oh, it's broken. Oh, there we go. So one thing that you can do if we're finger picking, let's just say we're on um, C. I'm just doing five, four, three, two, five, four, three, two. Thumb first, second, third. Thumb first, second, third. Maybe change chords. And with any of these technique exercises, it's about going slow, it's about being in time, doing what you can do, but it's not like you can just practice randomly. You need to practice with your chords, practice different, like Julie did a whole thing on Travis style picking, um, which you can look up. Uh, there's a single video on Travis style picking, but you just take it really, really, really slow and make sure it's clean and you should have I mean, it's gonna take a while, but you should have no problem starting to build up your speed. And what I would do is I would find a song that you really like, and even if you can't play it in time, just so you really like the chords, you like the way that it sounds, and so on and so forth. That's, that's my suggestion, is find a picking pattern that you like, find a song that you like, and go from there. That's what I, that's what I have to say about that, Jason. That's an excellent answer. Uh, real quick, yeah. before his time is up, Little T129, Staff Sergeant Tommy asks, I have a question for you, Jen, real quick. Yeah. I unfortunately don't have a metronome out here. Do you have any other suggestions to improve my chord changing speed? Um, well, if, he ha if you have a computer, you can... Suggestions to improve your chord changing speed. Without so a you, metronome? Without a metronome. Uh, suggestions for your chord changing speed, improving your chord changing speed without a metronome. The only thing that I can say with that is to play with a song because that will at least keep you in time. Even if, let's just say the song is really, really fast, what key should we be in? I think we're gonna be in D. Even if, so, say like the song's really fast. That's what I've decided to do. And you're like, man, I can't change that fast. A and strum. You do whole notes to try to get there. Something like that. But you're playing with the recording. And that'll help. You need something, though, that keeps you in time. You don't necessarily have to do all the strumming. Or let's just say that you can't hit that A chord in between. So you do one, two, three, four. Skip the A chord. Two, three. Go to the B minor instead of one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Simplify it, just one, two, three, four. It'll sound weird over the A chord, but it'll at least get you moving in time. That's my suggestion for if you don't have a metronome, but honestly, you can find metronomes and clicks online probably for free, or you can download them on your phone. I don't know how it works in Afghanistan, but uh, if you can download something on your phone, you on, on your iPhone, you can get a free metronome app, so you, you can find stuff like that. That's my suggestion. Uh, Simon Erica just uh, said that she would try to mail one to Tommy, which I think is very nice of her. And, and Erica will do that, Tommy. She will mail you. She has mailed stuff to people before. She will do that. So um, if you want a metronome, Erica's got you covered because she is, she's the mother of all of us. She tries to take care of everybody. So. If you want that, I'm sure it's yours. Okay, next question. Anurang Mishra asks, how to transpose a song from one key 
to another key? Ah, good question. How to transpose one song from one key to another key? I think we're going to pull out um, my beautiful whiteboard here, courtesy of Jason. Uh, now, let's just say we're doing uh, one, four, five in the key of C. So we have C, F, and G. <laughs> C, F, and G. I'm excited about this. Now, we want to go to the key of E, let's say. We want to transpose. So we're going to go up a major third. Up a major third. So a major third from C is E. Is that big enough? I don't know. I like writing here. Major third, a major third from C is E. A major third from F is A, and a major third up from G is B. So if you want to do one four five in C, you do C, F, and G. If you want to do a one four five in E, then you do E, A, and B. The important thing is that you are remembering how to build a major scale and and what is a major third or a major fourth or however uh, high up you're going or low you're going that you know exactly how to transpose because not every not every key is going to have just natural notes like we got lucky with this one but uh, I'm trying to think of, of something if we did the key of B uh, what is B? B, the, uh, the 4 would be E, the 5 would be F sharp. So we have to know our key signatures and we have to know uh, how, they, how they move and how they coordinate. That's a whole nother, whole nother lesson when we're talking about key signatures. But that's how you start, at least to transpose a key, is, is uh, depending on which key you want to go to know how many half steps or whole steps depending on how far you're going it is away and then you transpose from there that's what i got for that one cool and you even got the draw picture well it wasn't a picture well i mean you you have to be all teacher like on a board i know a marker I felt I felt like... very good i hope that makes sense theory is theory is a really tough thing to to explain because you have to start from like the ground level and then build from there. So transposing and things like that, it takes a, it takes a good deal of theory knowledge to be able to start doing that. So if there are more questions around theory, please let me know. And, we and can... uh, remind everybody of our email address, the same guitar questions. Oh, just email us at guitarquestions at mahalo.com if you have stuff, questions about this. So if, it's, if you're like, man, I still don't understand how to transpose a song. Um, let us know because we'll, we'll keep we'll keep answering these questions or we'll keep building the foundation and I think I, I, I don't know we're doing beginner guitar or beginner courses intermediate courses and I'm gonna start working on the advanced courses okay. and it may have some theory I'm hoping to get into that because it kind it doesn't quite make sense out of context you know what I mean that's yeah. very cool <laughs> all right another question from Sean from Chicago asks what is meant by extended chords? Okay, extended chords. What's meant by it? That's great. I get to use my, I get to use my whiteboard again. I love it. I love it. Um, so, a chord we call a triad, which is the one, the three, and the five. One, three, and five of the scale. Because in our scale we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we take the root, or the one, the three, and then the five. That's your triad. So we'll take it back to the key of C. Key of C, one is C, two would be D, so three would be E, four would be F, five would be G. So when we play a C chord, those are the three notes that we have in it. We have C, E, and G. That's your triad. If we're going to extend it, Extend the chord, let's just say we're going to add the 7. So in that case, if G is our 5, uh, A is our 6, and then 7 is our B. So that gives us a C major 7. So anything that we add after 
the five is an extension. So we can have nines, we can have elevens, we have thirteens, sharp elevens, uh, major sevens, minor sevens, so on and so forth, uh, diminished sevens. But that's what makes it extended, anything that's after the five. Very cool. I was very confused by that. Well, I was very confused by your conversation earlier, so we are even now. Oh, <laughs> I buy some chicken wings? Yeah, but you need to do that anyways. Oh, ouch. Ooh. Ouch. He promised me lunch, and he never... Remember last week, guys, when he hey, promised me lunch? You promised me to take me out to lunch for my birthday, and that didn't happen. Hello? <laughs> One Jason Gen Zero. <laughs> This is probably the uh, wrong time to get into this. It's <laughs> <laughs> all about learning the guitar now. <laughs> Oops. Uh, I just, you know what that was, folks? That was me getting busted. <laughs> That's what that was. He uh, is right. Got a question from, oh, we had our 108 total views. By the way, let you know. Boom. One. Oh. Eight. Eight. All right, got another music theory question for you. Oh. Kaiser. Kaiser? Kaiser asks. That's my health insurance. <laughs> music theory maintains that the third note of a chord is the most important note of a chord slash triad or even a scale. It is, this no is it this note that defines the flavor of a scale in a big way or is it indispensable? It, uh, okay, how am I going to repeat this? The third note of a chord, is it indispensable? The third note of a chord, is it indispensable? It is incredibly important. Uh, not that you can't get rid of it because we have stuff like uh, sus twos and sus fours which have no third in it. Um, so let's play it on guitar here. So for instance, if we have A minor, uh, a, C, E. C is your third. That's what makes it minor. If we're going to make it a major third, it needs to be C sharp. That's very important. But if I take everything off here, this is a B note now, and that turns it into an A sus 2, which has no third whatsoever. Or here, A sus 4, which is a D note, which has no third. So there are chords with no thirds, and it's fine, but it is, it gives it the quality of, depending on what the third is, that gives it the quality of the triad. So it is incredibly important, because if it's just, or for an A, if we just have A and E, that's a power chord, which doesn't define the chord at all. So I would say, yes, the root and the uh, third are probably the most important, and then after that, the seventh, if you were extending it. Um, but again, yeah, the third is, is I don't know, you can, you can get rid of it and change it into a different chord, um, but it's pretty important. <laughs> yeah. All right. Everybody uh, commented on the busted remark. They were like, oh, busted, busted, yeah. busted. That doesn't happen too often. It only happens about six times a day. So, uh, and then there's uh, people that are still trying to figure out ways to bring you chicken wings. Well. I said FedEx. <laughs> I think that's good. I think that's good. I, I don't even know how to respond to that. I'd be happy with any kind of food, really. Yeah. Mashed potatoes? Yeah, but you know, Skittles. That would be easy. You're a big fan of Skittles. <laughs> you know, I don't feel so bad, guys, about the not taking him out for his birthday, because this what? dude, this dude doesn't know me at all. What's your name again? This dude doesn't. Shh, this dude doesn't know me <laughs> at all. If Mark were in this room, Mark would know. But I didn't take Mark out for his birthday. Oh, double busted. <laughs> So, I'm a bad person. That's what, I'm a bad person that likes to eat a lot. Speaking of bad people that like to eat a lot, a big fan of M&M. &M <laughs> <laughs> <says, laughs> How? That was the perfect setup. Oh, my God. Yeah. A big fan of M&M. &M. A big fan wow. of M&M &M asks, how do you strum properly? How do you strum properly? Um, we've talked about this a little bit before. It's all about keeping your hand nice and relaxed, having the pick 
point to the strings. That's important that you're not curving your wrist like this or you're not doing weird stuff like this. It's relaxed, it's parallel. You wanna get a nice, good sound. I'm not crazy about my tone right now. I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, you get a nice, good sound. And remember, it's like shaking water off of your hand. That's kind of how you get that snap. It's not, you see the difference? Like here, nice and relaxed, I'm shaking water off my hand. I'm shaking it off, shake it off. I'm not doing this. I don't have as much control over that. And we, remember, we talked about um, kind of treating the bass strings and the treble strings as two different entities. So when we're doing G, hitting the low six string, low, I mean low in pitch. So I'm doing low and then the high strings, high in pitch. Instead of. But the main thing with anything when it comes to playing the guitar is stay nice and relaxed and go slow when learning a new strum. That's the best I can say for right now about how to strum properly. It works, shake it off, shake it shake off. Shake it off, shake it I off. might break you off. Oh, I just went into, rap. that was Nicki Minaj. Oh. Speaking of. Just that. let them bums blow steam, radiator. I don't listen there, sorry. There again, we part ways. Yep. Megan asks, <laughs> <laughs> I want to learn to sing and play guitar at the same time. Ooh. How would I go about doing that? So how do you learn to play and sing the guitar? How do you learn to sing and play the guitar at the same time? How do you learn to play and sing the guitar at the same time? This is a great question and it goes back to the same answer uh, for one, we take it really, really slow. I'm trying to think of a song that I know, and all my charts are gone, so I cannot, for the life of me. This is the only song I could think of. It's called Let Go. Some of you guys know it. But you start really slow, and you say, Well, the sun was staring you down. So start with the changes, and the sea wasn't making no sound. And then slowly build your strum. And then something they whispered to me, it said, come inside. I've got the love of your life. So I just built the strum a little bit there, but I'm taking it really, really slow. Another good thing is to have the lyrics printed out and have the chords above them so you can at least see where to change. Now that doesn't tell you how many bars it is like we talk about in the videos. Usually I'll say, okay, this is one bar, two bars, three beats, whatever it is. So, so the timing may be a little bit off, but if, if uh, uh, how am I going to do this? No, I don't want to write in the whiteboard. Uh, so, it, uh, and then the sun, and so you'd see sun and then a G written over it, was staring, there's your C add nine, you down, so you know when you're supposed to strum. Again, take it really, really slow. And if there's something that's tripping you up, take it even slower. Because if you're going, well, the sun is staring you, and you're like, oh, I can't get that. Just go down. The sun was staring you down. Keep going over the part that's giving you a problem, but at a ridiculously slow rate. And then just barely, barely, barely bump it up. And that should get you started. But get the lyrics out in front of you. Simplify your strumming. Simplify the melody. Simplify, simplify, simplify. And then start to build from there. Everyone in the chat room said your singing voice was beautiful and that you did really good at shaking it off. Because <laughs> I'm an expert at shaking it off. I have to do that daily. daily. Singing voice. I'm going to say, hey, guy, I'm going to start taking singing lessons. I've decided. I've decided because. Um, you guys have been very, very, very supportive of me and my singing. And, uh, and I wrote a song this week. Jason, I wrote a wow. song this week. I did. Cool. I wrote a, I wrote, oops. You wrote, I'm excited to hear it. I wrote a love song. About mashed potatoes? No. Chicken wings? No. Skittles? No. Ice cream? 
Drive and cry. <laughs> I wrote a love song this week, and I told my student, Ninfa, about it. And she was like, you have to put a video up. And I tried, and I got so scared, and I got drunk the other night. Oh, man. And I, and I was like, I know, I had one pear cider. You know, you guys want to buy me something? You can buy me pear cider. Love pear cider. So I was drinking, and I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to put a video up of my new song. Mm -hmm. And I chickened out. Oh. But I'm going to start taking vo voice lessons, so I feel better about that. All right, I'm excited to hear the song. It's cute. You know who it's about. Okay. Ooh, yeah. Secrets. <laughs> Even though that doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> At least I got a song out of it. Poor Jason has to listen to my love life woes all the time. We have to debrief. Yeah, we debrief. Except for nothing's happening right now. Mm. Nothing's, nothing's happening with my love life. Oh. Someone who uh, <laughs> has nothing to do with your love life, Steve. Steve from Oklahoma asks, I'm confused by fret intervals. What are whole steps and half steps? Um, that is a wonderful question, and that's an easy answer. What are whole steps and half steps? What are whole steps and half steps on the guitar? Easy enough. Half steps, one fret, whole steps, two frets. Make sense? So if I'm going E right here, Here's F, which is a half step, F sharp, which is another half step, and so on and so forth. These are just half steps. But if I go F to G, that's a whole step. G to A, that's a whole step. A to B, that's a whole step. That's it. That is the extent of it. I love those easy questions. Awesome. Mikey B from LA. Mikey B. Asks, what are some tips for mastering down strumming? Ooh, that's a good one. Some tips for mastering down strumming. Uh, that goes back to the metronome and getting speed. I think he's wanting to do. And what's, what you'll really need for down strumming is a good sense of your palm muting, which we've talked about a lot. Because we're, we don't have the accents of the up strums, we have to make it very interesting. So palm muting helps to give it a different tone. Um, what else was I going to say about this? I totally forgot. Dang it. It was something brilliant. It was either going to be brilliant or mediocre. Oh, accents. A accents with downstrokes. It's like one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. That helps a lot. Or doing, making sure you're doing like the ands. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. Stuff like that. But again, like with anything with this guitar, take it slow, get it clean. Play with a metronome or play with it. If you have a slow downer program, uh, which I have a great one called Amazing Slow Downer, that helps so much to play, play with the actual song, slow down, or play with a metronome. Buh. Excellent. Staff Sergeant Tommy just checked out. Bye, yeah, Tommy. You gotta go. Bye, so. Bye, Tommy. I want to thank him for his service again, especially July 4th coming up. Tommy, thank you for joining us. I hope I, hope I didn't irritate him. No, he said he said it was, it was a lot of fun. Oh, good. He said it was a lot of fun. He said keep making these videos, and he said he hoped to try to make it back next week. That's awesome. I'm so glad. I'm so glad to hear it. Jeeves from Edinburgh. Edinburgh. <laughs> yeah. Asks, what is the best guitar for a beginner, hollow body or Fender style? The best guitar for a beginner, hollow body or Fender style, I'm going to tell you what, Jeeves, doesn't matter. It does not matter. Main thing is, you guys know this, I don't know why I'm pointing at you with a red pen, um, a red marker. Main thing is, it stays in tune, uh, that the neck is good, the action is low, and that it fits your body. So for me, I think a Fender style would be better if I was a beginner because it's just a little bit thinner. Just a little bit. I mean, hollow bodies aren't that, well, some of them can be really thick. Um, 
but you have to sit down with it. It's a personal preference. It's now it doesn't matter so much to me because I, I, I would work with just about anything if it has a, a really good tone. But for a beginner, it has to fit your body because if you have something that's way too big for you or too small even, it's not going to work and you're going to think that it's you. I'm going to put this marker down because I feel like I'm going to throw it um, and I don't know why. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, it has to fit your body. It has to. It has to feel right, sound right. But the important thing is not. It's not the brand. It's not the color. Even though color, is, you know, but you got a pretty guitar. You got a pretty guitar. The important thing is that it fits, and that it stays in tune and the action's low. I would love a hollow body though. Hey, don't send me chicken wings. Send me a hollow body guitar. <laughs> <laughs> That's totally a thumbnail. I hope you know that. <laughs> <laughs> we did thumbnails of me eating oatmeal today. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So I've gotten question. I've gotten requests to do the the uh, inner world voice again. Uh, okay, cool. Because like, apparently, it's not apparently it's not my show. It's not. I want to give you another question. No, 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 no. Why don't you do? I used what, to draw. Yeah. Go ahead. Go, no, go I ahead. Do it. No, no. I go ahead and do anymore. the voice. I don't want to do it. No, no. In a world where Jen Trenny draws on the board. Can I even hear that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the, see, Jen is like my puppet, and I'll be the, the, uh, the voice behind the, uh, like, the Wizard of Oz. Mm -hmm. I know, I can be yeah, like the whatever. Wizard. No, because apparently you guys just want to talk to Jason, so I'll just <laughs> sit here, and they're if all, you, no. They're all asking me to do it, and I already did it. What's going on? Welcome to the Jason Show. <laughs> All right, let's go on. That's enough. Enough of a sidetrack. Thank you for that. I'll, slowly, I'll slowly take the show over. In a world where Jason shanks Jen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Megan, a big fan of Janelle Man uh, I'm gonna Janelle Manoe. Do you know what I'm talking about? No. Oh, never mind. Megan asks... <laughs> what is drop tuning? What is drop tuning? Oh, okay. Um, drop tuning, Megan, is where we put the guitar in, in a lower tuning than standard. So we've got our standard tuning, which is E, A, D, G, B, E. So we could, we could take it down to E flat. So E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, B flat, E flat. We could just drop the sixth string to D which is very common, so we just drop D tuning. Uh, we could drop the sixth string and the first string to D. We could take it down a whole step instead of just going to E flat, which would be a half step, which goes back to the uh, one of the questions of, uh, what was that question? What was that question? Oh, fret intervals? <laughs> Jason's like, I don't know what the question is. <laughs> fret intervals, we could, we could drop it down a whole step. There's also, I just did a bunch of chord videos of open G tuning, which is D, G, D, G, B, D. So it's dropping it down. You can also take it up. You can tune uh, strings up, but those are the most common. There's open D tuning. There's dad gad tuning. Um, all of them really, really fun to play with, and I encourage you to, to check them out. I didn't for a long time because I was just scared of tuning it to to anything different that I would like break a string or I wouldn't know what I was doing. But I, uh, this was also in high school when I was scared of my own shadow for a while. So I encourage you just to just to try it. And uh, if you need some help with it, then you can definitely let me know. I was going to say you could call me. I think I said that last week too. I just bit my nail. I'm like talking to you guys as if I'm in my living room. I'm like, hey guys, I'm going to just bite on my nail. How professional is that? That's quality. It's what I offer. Mahalo. 100% professional. Quality. <laughs> One more. I got another question for you. Two more questions, and then we're, we're out of here, Jen. Okay. Hunter from Texas asks, from Tejas asks, is it normal to be frustrated when learning the guitar? Uh, Hunter, is it normal to be frustrated when learning the guitar? Yes. And let me tell you something, Hunter from Texas. The frustration never ever stops. It gets better. I transcribed this uh, Daughtry song called, uh, called September. By the way, my birthday's in September. Just to let you guys know, it's coming up in two months. You best prepare for it. It's gonna be epic. Anyways, you just asked me a question and I started talking about myself. Sorry. Um, what was I gonna say? 
Oh, I was transcribing this Daughtry song and I just felt like I was gonna break because it was really fast and I couldn't pick out the notes and there was a lot of single notes and a lot of picking and da 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 da. Yes, it's totally normal to be frustrated, but let that fuel you to do better and, and use it as a positive of that you're so excited to play that you wanna learn it instead of, this is so frustrating, I'm gonna throw the guitar against the wall or I'm gonna throw my pick across the room, Maria. Maria threw her pick at across the room, Jason. You're gonna throw a pick at me? No, Maria, he doesn't listen to me. <laughs> Maria threw a pick across the room, because it is frustrating, and there have been countless times where I thought I was gonna throw my guitar out the window. I was very close to doing it. Um, but again, use it as, you know what, I just wanna get better, I just wanna get better, and every time I practice, I'm getting better. And so you keep going with it. It's a good answer. I like that. You didn't. You well, I, there's a there's a big hubbub going in the uh, the the chat room. They want to see Mark and me, and I told them that if they were good, maybe next week. Ooh, but they're never good. Yeah, I know. They're well, always see. causing problems. See, they're always causing problems. And they, then they brought up the references that Mark has said that he would appear on screen again once he showered and shaved. And somebody else brought up the point. Well, certainly he has showered and, sha sa bleh, showered and shaved since the first Ustream, which was like six weeks ago. They don't know, Mark. He hasn't. Yeah, that's the thing, guys. <laughs> that's the thing. It's very different. Remember, Mahalo, professional. <laughs> We're all <laughs> professional. <laughs> we, we all give quality. We still love him, though. Oh, yeah. We still, we still love, him. love him. We just don't sit next to him at lunch. <laughs> oh! And Mark just responded, ha ha, nope, no showering and shaving. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, that's right. Uh, final question of the show. Yeah, yeah. Jessica, a big fan of the Eagles, so she must love your Hotel California. That's right. She, um, she probably loves it or hates it. Yeah. There's no in between. Can you retune a guitar to avoid using a capo? Can you retune a guitar to avoid using a capo? Uh... Yes, I wouldn't recommend it because if you get too tight, your strings are gonna pop. You're gonna, they're gonna snap off. But I think you could, you could um, tune it up a half step or a uh, whole step. Whole step would make me a little bit nervous. I've never done it because might as well for me personally slap the capo on the first fret or second fret and you're good to go. Um, but yeah. I would be very careful with that. You don't want the tension to be too too hard on the neck, and you don't want your fingers to snap because as there's more, as you tighten it, it's going to get more tense. And if you're playing really aggressively, it could snap. I mean, that could happen no matter what. Um, but I would be careful. I, me personally, I say just buy a capo. It's twenty bucks, less than twenty bucks. You will use it a ton, and again, know how to. But but if you really felt like you didn't want to buy a capo. Um, you can ask Erica to send you one, <laughs> and I'm sure she would send you one. Uh, but no, no, no. Um, try it. But it makes me a little bit nervous. I would just buy a capo. That's my personal opinion. And that's the final question, Jen. That's the final question. I don't know how to feel about that. I'm conflicted. Yeah, I feel 116 total views. I feel happy about 116 total views, but then I feel sad about leaving. Then I want to give you some, some messages from the Ustream. Bye, Jen, from Mate89. Bye, Jen, take care and keep rocking. Simon and Erica, Jen, we love you more than you think. You are legendary oh, with Jay. We're, we're back to that. We're back to the legendary. Daniel UK991 says, bye, Jen, thank you for another great Ustream. Uh, MacGyver says, see you in the future, legendary with a J. They're putting a J in there. Yep. Preferably by next week this time, laugh out loud. Okay. Uh, I love it. I love it. I love it. There's some new people in here. Yeah, yeah. I don't recognize all these names. Texture I like says, it. says, Tranny, go and kick. And I can't say that last word. Ooh. Go and kick. Maria. Say butts. Oh, because Maria's <laughs> Maria is on a cussing kick right now. She's trying to get me to cuss because she wants me to pay Mark a quarter. Oh, I'm not going to do it. Everybody in the chat room is actually telling me 207, but my screen says 116. So we're going to go with their number. 207. 207. Woo! Oh, did you see we're actually featured on the music page? Yeah. It, uh, last week, if, if you just let it scroll, you'd see like American Idol, and then you'd see Nicki Minaj, and then who who would you see? Your face. My fat face. Whoa, it's not bad. With, well, it feels. Okay. Feel, could be skinnier. Um, my fat face. 
with Nicki Minaj. That's the closest, that's not true, that's not the closest I've ever been to Nicki Minaj, because Nicki Minaj and I have touched hands Ooh, interesting. several times. So uh, let's say goodbye to all the people, and then maybe play us a little ditty out. What do you think, Jen, as you hold your hand to the sky? I think that's, I think that sounds fabulous. Thank you, thank you so much for coming and watching every single week and finding me on Facebook and talking to me on Facebook. Uh, you can find us at, at Mahalo Guitar on uh, Twitter. And guitar questions. Guitar questions at Mahalo.com if you want to send us some questions. Um, find me on Facebook, Jen Tranny Official. Uh, maybe, maybe Jason and Mark will be joining us next week. They're beautiful faces. Maybe we will. Happy, happy. And where I'm gonna go now, sad. Yeah. But then happy. That's it. Oh, this is my new song. I like it. Bye, everybody. Bye. Love you. <laughs>